But what's most important when we talk about regulation and public policy for stable coins is that this is a very broad term. And in the stable, stable coin ecosystem, it's just that. It's an ecosystem in and of itself. So you have projects you mentioned, USDC, that's backed one-to-one -to, -one to the dollar. So every token that's circulating, there is a dollar represented in a bank account, and it's audited. The, the stablecoin project that unwinded very quickly just the other week, Terra, that's what's called an algorithmic stablecoin. It operated completely different. So as we talk about public policy, the recommendations and all of the legislative proposals and the recommendations from the president's working group, they focused on stablecoins that are backed one to one to the dollar. So we do not support the PWG's recommendations. They pretty much said only banks and depository institutions can issue them. Um, that really does not take into account the almost a decade of innovation that's been built by the digital asset industry itself. And there's other ways to do this. So it's, um, it's interesting that Terra has taken such uh, a lot of wind out of the conversation. Um, but from a policy perspective, most regulators probably could not articulate how Terra operated and exactly what happened. So I think the first thing we need to do is just slow down, understand what happened, and understand how the technology works before we just try to slap regulations on this as a knee-jerk reaction to one failed, one failed project. So. Um, there's many different ways to look at this, and we need to recognize how these projects operate and how the technology operates before just regulating out of fear. Look, this is an innovation economy, and innovation is just that. You're gonna have projects that don't succeed. You can't innovate if companies aren't allowed to take risk, and some are going to fail. The issue that you bring up is really around consumer protections. How do we ensure that retail investors understand how to navigate this technology? And for people who really care about consumer protections, they should be the biggest supporters of digital assets and cryptocurrencies because what this technology allows for is for the consumer to, for the first time, hold and custody their own digital assets. You can't do this with other financial instruments today. The ability to truly control your own asset is something that's completely new and anyone who cares about consumer privacy or data protection, this has enormous potential benefits from that. I think the bigger issue today is this is a very nascent technology. Bitcoin, the first cryptocurrency, it's only 13 years old. We're still at very early stages of adoption. Some of the platforms and the wallets and the interfaces are still very technical and a little wonky. So we need to, really the best tool we have is educating consumers on how to navigate this technology. But there's tremendous potential to have a complete new way to protect consumers, and that's through data privacy. So you have Bitcoin, which represents the proof of work blockchains out of all the cryptocurrencies that run of proof of work. Bitcoin's always represented 90% or more of the market cap. So when we're talking about proof of work, we're largely talking about Bitcoin. And Bitcoin is very different and proof of work is very different than things like proof of stake. Proof of work is the creation of digital property. We're creating a scarce digital asset that is serving uh, as a store of value. It's akin to a digital gold. Uh, the chairman of the Fed, Jerome Powell, SEC, Chairman Gary Gensler have both testified in front of Congress comparing Bitcoin to a digital form of gold. Proof of stake is you take tokens, you stake them in a network, and you run smart contracts applications on top of that. So you're allowing for decentralized applications and smart contracts. That is a completely different function and use case of proof of work, what Bitcoin represents. So we can't conflate these two things, and when it comes to public policy, we do need to recognize those, de those benefits. The larger issue at the SEC is that we do not have a definition on what is considered a digital asset security. We know Bitcoin's a commodity, it's regulated by the Commodities and Exchange Act and the CFTC. Everything else, we have complete ambiguity. Some of these are digital asset securities. Many of them are not, but which ones? We don't have a framework and we don't have clarity. And despite Chairman Gensler saying we do, his fellow commissioners do not agree and it's the number one issue holding back our innovation economy today. So the proof of work mining moratorium in the state of New York 
it has passed the assembly, so the, the equivalent of the House in the state of New York. And it, right now it is in the Senate. It's pending in the Senate. So it has to pass through the Environmental Committee before it can go through the, to the floor for a vote. At this time, it hasn't been brought forward. The session ends on June 2nd. Uh, there is talk, but they may extend it by a couple days and they may reconvene later in the summer. As of right now, it's being held in the Senate. So we are calling on all of those invested in the cryptocurrency ecosystem to continue to communicate to New York senators and let them know that this bill is harmful for our ecosystem and to not bring it forward at this time. They're still just debating it. There's a lot. They're hearing from stakeholders. Um, we've had a huge grassroots campaign. We've had literally thousands of people right into the Senate opposing this bill. So I think our efforts have been successful in stalling it moving forward. Um, but that could change at any time because there's a whole other group of environmentalists that are pushing this bill. Um, so at this time it's being held, but they can bring, they have the power to bring it forward anytime they want. This is our, uh, our fifth year hosting this event. This is our first time coming back post-COVID. We took a two-year hiatus. We have over 800 people here today. We have people from all over the country. Um, really, the whole point I think we want to make is that we're not a bunch of shadowy super coders. This is the US technological and innovation economy. These are companies who are building the next, we're rebuilding the internet, a peer-to-peer -peer internet. We're changing the way society can interact and transact with one another. And we have companies here who want to show to our policymakers what they're building and they want to help them build a legal framework that further supports the development of this technology here in the United States. So this is Crypto's Day in DC. I'm so proud of all the companies and all the people and the technologists and the innovators and the investors who have volunteered their time and their resources to be a part of this. This is really a testament to who we are as an industry. These are people who want to work with policymakers. This is not about killing regulation. This is about ensuring we get the regulatory environment correct so the US can lead in this space.